What's up YouTube? Welcome to a new video. Today we're going to be talking about typography in web design specifically and how to set that up. Literally, where do you start? How many body copy sizes? How many header sizes? How big should they be? Should they follow some rules? Who knows? I'm going to show you how we set stuff up at Tonic. It's really easy, really quick, and you can take this, create yourself a starting template for every project that you do and speed up that workflow. So let's go. Right, here we are in Figma. So you need three things for this really. One, you need Figma or XD or Sketch or wherever you're designing. I'd recommend one of those three, but Figma is wonderful. And the second thing you will need is to go to typescale.com. So that's type-scale.com. This is how we'll be determining the type scales. And thirdly, you need your brain. So let's go. Down the side here, you'll see I've got some stars. This is to remind me, this is what we need to set up. So we've got heading star H1 all the way through to H6. And then we're gonna have a text size large, medium, regular, small, and tiny. So that's five sort of body copy sizes. This may seem like a lot. Um, and when we started designing years and years and years ago, we never had this many, you know, we maybe have two body copy sizes and our designs weren't very good. We found that this scale works really well. This scale is based entirely off of FinSuite's client first system, which is what we use a lot of the time to develop inside Webflow. I'll leave a link in the description so you can check that out yourself. Those guys are really smart. They've built hundreds and hundreds of brilliant websites using these scales. And you know, a lot of people know of them and it just makes sense. So we've got six heading styles, which every website would have. H1 is the biggest heading on the page and it tells um, search engines what the content of that page is about. So you can obviously go off and read all about SEO and stuff. We're not covering that in this video, but we are gonna need to set up a size for it. So that's our biggest one. H6 is our smallest heading. And then we've got five body copy sizes. So we kind of need to determine which one of these is gonna be our base size. This is the most important. So if we have a look at type scale here, if I zoom in a little bit for you, we can see it's asking us for a base size and it's saying 16 pixels is a base size. And then based on that, these, these are the kind of heading sizes that you might end up with. So you can see here, 48 pixels being the biggest. So if we just whack that into Figma, so if we say, this is a heading style one, H1, and we bump this up to 48. Let's put it into inter semi bold, lovely. And let's track it in a little bit. There we go. So, to me, that doesn't look that impressive. That's quite small. And kind of current styles in web design are quite big, chunky headings. I feel like something more like 72 might be pretty good. So we're, maybe we're aiming to try and get something quite big like that. And then if we're thinking about body copy, let's pop this down to 18. Let's take it out of semi-bold and pop it into regular. Let's just pull this out a bit and we can use a plugin called Lorem Ipsum. And let's just generate uh, five sentences for now so we can have a look. So something like this may be a good start, 160% line height. Maybe we can bump that up. We can talk about that later. So maybe something like this could be a good place to start. So we've got 18 as our body copy, and then we've got 72 as our header. So if we have a look back in here, if we set our base size to 18, everything just automatically responds. So now here, one rem, we won't worry about that. That's for a different video, but 18 pixels, let's say that's our body copy font size. And then we've got our next header up from this. So maybe this would be our H6 could be 22. This is 28, H5, H4 would be 35. Have I done that right? H6, H5, H4, H3 would be 43. H2 would be 54. And if we click this plus, we can get one bigger one, 68. Now that's pretty close to our 72 guess. So we could just run with this scale if we wanted to. And we can always click this button over here and this shows us what it might look like in situ. So it's got all of the different heading sizes and our base size in the middle. And if I just go back to regular size, we can see what that looks like rather than zoomed in. Let's pop that back in. Now, this is based on a scale of one, to 1.25. So that means the next size up is 1.25 larger than the one before. So it's 125% of its previous size. 
that is a major third scale. We can have a look here and we can drop it down. We can do a small scale, like a minor second, and you get a really gradual increase, or we can bump it up and go mad with a perfect fifth. And you can see now, instead of having 68, which was our top size, we've got 205. So this is a really big scale. And the bigger scales are kind of a bit more trendy at the moment, but this is entirely up to you and it's up to the branding that you're working with. We quite often go with a major third, it's pretty standard, or a perfect fourth is really nice as well. And you can see here, we've got 75, which is very close to our 72 that we were guessing with earlier. So maybe we're gonna do this. Okay, so let's work with this. So we've got a perfect fourth scale, set at 18 pixels as our base size. If you wanted, you can change to a different font here. So we could just type in enter and pop it in and see what it looks like with the font that we've chosen, lovely. Now, let's say that this is our H1, this is our H2, H3, H4, H5, and then this is our base size, so where's our H6? So in this case, we could say that our H6 is 18 as well. So we could have an H6, which is bold, and then our body copy is just regular, and then you still get that hierarchy between kind of a little header and a little paragraph, should you need it. Again, you know, this is all completely up to you, it's up to the branding. This might not work. You might start designing with this and think, you know what, there's not enough contrast between these two. And then you could rejig your scale so that this becomes your H6, five, four, three, two, and then you can have a bigger H1. So it's up to you. We're gonna start from here, this being our H1. So it's 75, I'm gonna round it up because it would be quite frustrating as a developer to come in and say, right, what size is the H1? It's 75.76, that's mad. Let's just go 76. So we'd come in here, we make this 76. And then the line height, we always want to do this in percentage when we're working in Figma. This is because, right, so let's say it's 120%. That's usually a good place to start. We can drag this and we can have a look. See that feels quite nice. We might want to tighten it up depending on what font we're using, like 110 looks pretty good here. Now, if we actually did 110%, so that that is relative to the, the font size we've chosen here, so 76. So if we did 76 times 1.1 px, is that gonna work? That's 83.6, that's what that equates to. If we now change this later on, say we've designed a whole website and the client says, hey, the headings are way too big, can we make them a bit smaller? And you bump this down, the line height is still 83.6 then you're going to have to go through and calculate that all again. So if we undo, we're back to here where we have it in percentage somewhere, there we go. And then we bump this down, we can see our line height has stayed relative to the font size. And that is really great for us and it's really great for our developers. They can set this up as what's called unitless line height where they would just do 1.1 dash rather than percentage, but we can just work with percentage in Figma. So let's go back and let's make this, I think it was 76. So this is a heading style H1, nice. And then what we can do is quite nice just to label these up. We can pop this here and we can auto layout these together and that looks good. So now we're gonna need a heading style H2. So let's just update this label h2 and we'll come back and have a look at our scale here so the next one down is 56.83 so we can up so we can round this up to sorry did i say 56 so we'll round this up to 57 so we can grab this and we'll make this 57 easy and we'll do this down again and what we can now do is we can auto lay out these three and let's put a bit more space in between them and we'll make our h3 so you can see what we're doing here I'll speed up the video in a moment. So next one is 42.63, so we'll go 43. See here, we've got a really nice scale here. I think this is gonna look great. We can just bring this page down a bit. So I will pause this video here. I'll finish the heading styles and then we'll come back to the body copy styles. All right, guys. So what I've done is I've added all of the heading styles here and I have added just a regular paragraph based on our base size here of 18 pixels for the five different body copy sizes that we've got set up. Top tip here, what we can do is we can grab this auto layout frame, get it out of there, and we can just give it a background and we can give it some padding. And then we've got just one, one 
and basically which will auto update if we add any more styles we're still keeping this all nice and tidy so let's undo those we don't obviously need those but when we come to update these later if we increase the sizes of our headings this whole frame will just scale and it will maintain that 120 pixels padding at the side it just keeps everything nice and neat you know i like that so we've currently got five sizes all set at 18 we need some bigger ones we need some smaller ones so what we could do is we could say this is 18 let's make this 20 let's make this we could go 22 but maybe let's go 24 let's make this 16 sometimes you need a smaller one and then let's do a really tiny one of 14 and this could be you know like your little privacy links at the bottom of the page and stuff like that stuff that the clients don't really want people to be uh, drawn to so this looks pretty good off the bat there's another option we could do we could kind of follow the scale that we've used here so if this is 18 this is 24 this is 32 so we could say this is 24 and we could say this is 32 now this could work this seems a bit ridiculous for body copy hey it's bigger than our two smallest heading sizes that's crazy but that's okay you know sometimes we might just want you know maybe this is a testimonial you know and we just want it to stand out a little bit and um, maybe all the testimonials are quite short maybe they're like this and you can look quite big and chunky like that could work um, I think for this example let's go back to 24 20 this is a scale we quite often use and this isn't really based on anything i don't need to plug this in to here we can as you can see we've got stuff that gets smaller so below 18 we've got 13 10 and 7. these in my opinion are too small we ignore them we only really use this to set up our heading sizes and play around with scales and see what works with the branding that we're working with and maybe obviously we're not working with any branding we're guessing but this kind of looks cool right we've got a nice big header that's cool we've got some like this is pretty good i like this this could be used in like hero sections you know you've got a headline a little bit of copy and call to action this could work really well or this one um, and then this will be kind of our default paragraphs and most you know where you've got a little icon a little header and some text you know we'll use that and then small if we need it we don't tend to use it too much and then this will be for really small stuff you know this could be footer links or something like this up to you you're the designer so we've got those set up we'll just add, add these as styles as we did before so we'll just create a new style we didn't do that before sorry let's do let's set up some styles now so we'll click on our heading here we we'll click these little four dots this is a wonderful thing about a ui design tool like figma we're going to create a style and we will call this heading style h1 we're going to copy that so we can use it again we'll do the same for this so click the four dots, click the plus, heading style H2, H3. I won't sit here and make you watch to do all of them. We'll just do a few like this. And then let's do text size large. So let's write text size large. Do that. We'll do medium. And we'll do regular. You can see it doesn't take that long to set all of this up and what you can do is you can then create this as like a starting template for you to just reuse all the time we'll release a video on that shortly how we set up all of our color styles and stuff like that so we can hit the ground running and we don't have to do this for every project so we've got some styles set up here let's hit f on our keyboard let's grab the desktop frame here and perhaps this is our hero section that we're going to mock up we're going to take a heading in and let's see what we're doing so we can say um For copywriter yeah i have been told before it looks quite tight to me but we'll see we'll grab some paragraph up here you know we're saying hey this is a killer product a little bit more about it and then let's make a button so let's say uh, start your free trial auto layout this button press shift a let's give it some padding on the sides and the top let's give it a background color let's give it, change the text color lovely and let's round those corners nice and then let's pull out these and we'll set these to fill the container and then we can kind of just drag this in and out that looks good that looks pretty good to me so we can kind of say hey how does that look maybe you're thinking hmm all of our headlines are a bit big maybe the h1 was too big and we want to revert back down to 56 let's have a look what happens there and all we need to do now instead of grabbing this and changing it 
we can just click on the canvas anywhere outside of the frame and we can see all of the styles set up in our project. So we can see here heading style H1 is 76 and it has 110 line height. We can just click this. Maybe we want to open up that line height a bit. So we can do this and you can see on the left, it's updating all of our styles. Maybe we drop this down to 56 and we can see our heading has obviously dropped down to 56 and it has done so here as well. And maybe that H2 was too big and we can drop that down to 48. There we go. Now, maybe that looks better. Not for me. I like it nice and big. There we go. So this is loosely how we start a project. From here, we'll just start wireframing or we'll start designing. Depends on who we're working with. If we ever need to update it, we can update it here. Again, this is just, you know, just ideas. This is just a good place to start. A lot of the time people just guess and they just use the scale tool and just drag out a massive heading. Sometimes it's nicer to just have a little bit more structure in place. We'll have a nice organized system down the side and we can update it as we go. If we always update from these style layers here, everything will, all the changes will cascade through our document and it's going to save you a ton of time in the future. So that's how we start working with typography and web design here at Studio Tonic, and we'll see you in the next video.